The popular television series Breaking Bad illustrates clandestine chemistry for various methods of synthesizing the Schedule II restricted stimulant methamphetamine. In the pilot episode, trained chemist Walter White produces meth by the common pseudocook, which involves isolating pseudoephedrine from over-the-counter anti-congestion medications through extraction by methanol, followed by purification through evaporation of toluene. However, the Drug Enforcement Agency is very aware of this process, and thus have made it almost easier to simply buy meth on the street than pseudoephedrine legally. As Walt quickly begins producing industrial quantities of methamphetamine, a pseudocook becomes too slow, impractical, and otherwise dangerous. This forces them to shift their cook to P2P, which is an acronym for the main carbon precursor phenyl 2 propanone also commonly referred to as phenyl acetone. Reductive amination of phenyl acetone with methylamine and an elemental aluminum catalyst yields methamphetamine. Now quote unquote Walt's recipe is actually a very well known process for synthesizing the methamphetamine molecule piece by piece, which is why methylamine is restricted and Walt and Jesse were forced to steal it. Now in reality, methylamine can actually be produced at home with relative ease in your own kitchen sink by simply boiling ammonia into methanol with a proper desiccant catalyst. However, even though ammonia and methanol are easily obtainable chemicals for everyone, purchasing 1,000 gallons of any chemical will surely raise eyebrows and likely lead to questions and paperwork. Despite the show's obsession with attaining methylamine, the more complicated precursor to obtain is phenylacetone, which is also DEA restricted. Walt chose to form this precursor in a tube furnace by reacting acetic acid with phenyl acetic acid using thorium nitrate as a catalyst. A strange option for a catalyst, since manganese would be much easier, cheaper, less suspicious to acquire, and would work equally as well. This is as much detail as the show provides for Walt's synthesis, since it was specifically designed to not make a sufficient tutorial for illicit chemistry, a principle which I maintain in this video. So we're left wondering how exactly Walt synthesized his copious amounts of phenylacetic acid, since it too is a restricted chemical. This again leads us to the issue of, despite the method he used to make it, how he acquired nearly 1,000 gallons of reactants without raising suspicion, an issue which the show ignores entirely. This flowchart proposes one method of the P2P cook using only reagents available to the general public. In practice, however, this would be an unpreferable process since diatomic bromine would be both hazardous and time-consuming to produce. Lastly, Walt's point of pride and twist on the typical P2P cook that makes him so legendary is his enantiomer selectivity. Since methamphetamine has a chiral center on carbon-2 of the alkyl chain, simply proceeding with the process as described would yield a racemic mixture of methamphetamine, that is, a 50-50% mixture of mirror images of the molecule, referred to as enantiomers of one another. This is disfavorable, because only the left-handed enantiomer acts as a biological stimulant, and the other enantiomer simply dilutes the drug. There are a few known catalysts that will favor the production of the left-handed enantiomer, but they would not be readily available, and even if they were, would add a significant price to their cook. It also would only increase enantiomeric purity to about 70% anyway. So how then does Walt achieve his impressive 99.1% purity? This too is not explained in the show, nor is it known by real chemists. Walt would have to have discovered a brand new, superior method of enantiomer selectivity, which leads to his success in the drug trade. Notice I did not explain details on how to obtain many of the reactants in a complete synthesis, nor did I mention their complementary catalysts as to prevent being responsible for supplying the knowledge for means of a felony. Thank you so much for watching, and if any of you have any ideas on a more efficient synthesis or a cheap method of increasing synthetic enantiomer selectivity, please comment below.